Hey guys, in this video, we're just gonna simply learn how to record video, the settings that you should be thinking about, and not even live streaming, just recording great video with OBS. So I've got OBS open up right here and I have it in the simple mode, but I like to have it in studio mode. Quick story, I used to record so many videos with OBS and the reason why is because you can record videos without the need for much post-production if you're doing it all live. So there's two options. You can have a producer like I have right now. We've got Michael actually doing the production right now and doing all the switching for me. Or, you know, it's possible, and I've done this before, um, to just have a projection screen or a television in front of you and be talking to a camera, but actually using a keyboard and mouse and doing the switching yourself. I did that for years. So it's awesome to be able to create videos quickly and easily live. I really think it's great. So workflow, think about this. Let's say you've got one camera and a microphone and this is your main shot. Maybe you have a secondary camera. Maybe you have a ceiling camera showing a document that you're talking about. And I just wanna show you a couple tips to make your OBS videos really great. So one is B-roll, okay? B-roll is a simple video that you just have prepared and you're ready to play inside your video. So you might have a live camera feed where you're making a presentation. You're saying, hi, this is what I'm talking about. This is what the video is going to be. And then you cut to some B-roll. And B-roll can be great. You could have a voiceover already included. So you can just have a breather while that two minute video is playing and you can kind of prepare for your next segment. Or one of my favorite things to do is to have maybe a minute or two of B-roll and actually have like a script that you can just read, okay? So think about that, like you're not on camera anymore so no one knows that you're reading from a script. So there's a lot of great little tips that you can do to, pr to create a great video. So you can have in your scenes, so let me show you this. So right here, we've got a couple different scenes. So we've got our base scene. You guys remember this scene with a ticker. And by the way, this kind of does tie into another video we're going to be showing shortly about hotkeys. So see how those are switching automatically? I have hotkeys set up right on my keyboard so that I can switch between those. So you could literally be looking at a camera and just, you know, you have three or four scenes and you just click one, two, three, four, just to go back and forth between maybe an overhead shot. And, and doing what you need to do. So that's another little tip there. So um, hotkeys are really great for recording your videos. You can have an intro, an outro, but now let's talk about the actual settings in OBS to make sure you know where you're recording your videos and what resolution it's all set up to be. So we'll go to File, Settings, and you'll see this Start Recording button over here. Obviously that's where, how you start the recording, but how do we know where our recordings are gonna be? and how it's all gonna get set up. So we'll go down here to output and we'll go to the recording tab and there's a custom one, standard is usually always fine. We can browse for the folder that we want to put our videos in. And by default, it's your computer and the videos folder. It might be a little different on Mac, but you basically choose the folder you want all of your videos to go to. Now next, you choose the audio track, well, the, the recording format that you want that you want to go with. So your recording format, I always choose MP4, but this warning pops up and tells you that if your computer dies, if something happens, if OBS crashes, your entire MP4 will be lost. So if you go with something like MKV, uh, which I'll select just to show you, that that warning goes away because you no longer need to worry about that because if your computer dies, MKV will actually save up to the point of your computer dying. But MP4 is pretty safe in my opinion. Now on the audio track side, we have to just double check something. And this is something I really want you guys to think about because it's important to remember that if you go to advanced audio properties, you need to make sure that the, the microphone, whatever audio, all the audio sources that you want sent to your recordings are sent to the right track that you have selected. So sometimes, rarely, people want to have one uh, you know, audio track going to the stream and a different audio track potentially going to the recording. So um, if you need to do that, and in settings, you simply change the tracks that you have set up. So in recording, under the output tab, we have set up for track two to be on our audio. 
Now on our encoder, this is important to think about. Uh, a lot of you guys out there have an NVIDIA graphics card like I do here. That's that N, uh, NVENC H.264. Um, that you may want to reserve simply for your encoding of your stream. It really depends on what you, you care more about. And uh, you should take a look at your task manager to see, you know, does your, your GPU, your graphics processing unit, your graphics card, does it have the ability to just handle both? Is it a, a really beast of a, a graphics processor? Um, if, if you can, you know, it's something you need to think about. It, if you only have an i5, maybe you use the i5 for the recording and your graphics card for the streaming and encoding. So you have to kind of figure out, depending on the computer that you have, what will work best. Now, I, I want to look down here really quickly. Uh, you see CBR, that's constant bit rate. That you want to use for your stream, but for your recording, variable bitrate will allow you to do a better job of buffering and basically allow you to capture a better quality recording. So always choose VBR. And then your bitrate here, this is an important thing to think about. Now we talked about bitrates when we were talking about streaming. The larger the bitrate, the larger your files are going to be. The larger your bitrate for your stream, the more upload speed you're going to need to stream. Now, bitrate, when we're talking about recording, that doesn't take up any upload speeds. It's just downloading to your computer. So obviously using a solid state hard drive is going to be your best bet. Um, you're going to get your best, uh, you know, fastest uh, recording times. But on the bitrate level, I usually do something like 1200 and that's 12 megabits per second. Some people use 16. I've even heard some people doing 50 megabits so 50,000 K there but I think that's insane those those files rack up really fast so it's, it's interesting to do a test uh, you can go on a calculator I'll link below to check out bit rates for how much time and how much storage that's going to eat up but when you're doing YouTube videos and if, if it's not really like a Hollywood movie or anything I think anywhere from 10 to 20 is is definitely a good enough quality to be acceptable um, and that's all you really got to do. So once you've got all your settings set up, you can go ahead and save those settings and then hit start recording. And then now I'm creating a court recording right now. Now you'll see that the CPU just bumped up to 38. Uh, you can see that there at the bottom. So keep an eye on that, that, uh, CPU. You may not be able to stream and record at the same time, depending. Now I'm up to 43. And as soon as I stop recording, you'll see it will bump back down to 25. So those are just some of the things that you need to know about OBS and um, recording. I hope that makes sense. We have a great uh, tutorial and course here that you can kind of learn everything you need to know about OBS updated for 2019 and 2020 with the OBS 22, the latest software. So check it out. Hopefully you guys can hit that like button and thanks for watching.